the Rolex Submariner and the Omega Seamaster Professional. We have seen the argument and comparison happen again and again between these two watches. Which one is better? Which is the perfect watch to choose? Which works better in any environment? Which has better value retention? And a myriad of other questions. They make for a pair of watches that are always pitted against each other. Admittedly, they are both interesting to talk about for the above reasons, but I will argue that the only similarity they really share, if we have to dig deep, is that they are both classed as dive watches. We'll get into that point in a second. So how do these discussions usually go? More often than not, with a totalitarian answer about which is better for your money. Either or. With no real grey area. Where the actual conversation should be focused on bringing the two watches forward and highlighting the aspects that each offer, which in turn would make the piece appeal more to the individual. And not so much why one watch is greater than the other. There is no point in upsetting one camp and empowering the other, which is so often the case with discussions like these. And I have to ask, what good is it to polarize an audience? There are more than enough reasons to stop putting these two watches against each other with an incentive to define a winner by process of elimination. Now, of course, what makes this such an interesting subject is that there are devotees on both sides, Omega enthusiasts and Rolex enthusiasts, with many of us in the middle who appreciate both for different reasons. I wanted to bring these watches to the table differently, and then it hit me. I like designing stuff. Why not just take the best design aspects of both combine them together and create a penultimate piece that would appeal to both camps. Sounds too good to be true, but in the end, I wanted the final watch to almost act like a symbol, showing devotees on both sides what could happen if we got along better. So what are the common similarities that they both share? Swiss made, rival companies, dive watches, 300 meters of water resistance, and both watches have ties to James Bond. They both have a tremendous history. The Submariner and the Seamaster names date back to the early halves of the 20th century, and both have seen extensive service over the decades. See the watches of the British Armed Forces video for more. I will link it in the corner of the screen now. But instead of spending time covering history and heritage of how the watch designs evolved, to make things simpler, we will be looking at the modern examples that you can find today. I think it's fair to look holistically at models from the 90s up until the current lineup of pieces that are on offer. That's roughly 20 years. The designs of these two watches are vastly different. Each evoke different feelings, and the way they have been executed highlights different approaches. Granted, there are pros and cons to each. But where one watch triumphs in one area, the other follows with an equally balanced answer. So we should justify that, like I've said countless times before, no watch is truly perfect. We will begin by looking at the Submariner. And instead of running through the specifications and dimensions that you can find everywhere, Let's break down how the watch visually presents itself. On first impressions, the modern Submariner, after countless references that have spanned across half a century, the watch has reached a point where its design is extremely purposeful. Its presence, stature, layout, everything about it brings across the theme of design for purpose. Every element has been thoughtfully executed. I think one area that can sum up the thinking that has gone into this watch is the case design. The case shows a very, almost mass-produced quality. Apart from the brushing on the top of the lugs and the polishing on the sides, it shows little else. The sharpness of the case and lugs, especially underneath, that can cut into your flesh if you run your finger across it at an angle. In many ways, the Rolex Submariner has been able to distill simplicity itself with the way it produces its watch cases. They aren't particularly special, but because of their direct understanding of a formula, have managed to become instantly recognizable and extremely utilitarian. I see the design to be industrial in nature, built to be specific, with nothing more or less added. Rightly so, the case is not the center of attention, and instead, the simplistic nature of the architecture directs your attention to the dial. Now if we look at how Omega has addressed their professional case, we see another clear example of how the brand creates their pieces. I see the design of these cases to be less industrial in nature and more organic, purposeful, but a watch that manages to flit between the more formal sports watch. The approach seems to appreciate the concept of flow. There has been a thought on how to give the watch a more dynamic quality. Instead of it presenting itself as a clear up and down utilitarian watch, the case has a more sculptural feeling behind it. So which is better, you ask? Well, they actually managed to do the same thing. The case design of the Submariner, being simple and direct, helps guide the eye towards the dial. And the case design of the Seamaster, with an array of brushing and polishing, 
helps to taper down the overall presence of the watch case on the wrist, but also guides the eye towards the dial. Two different approaches that give you a similar result. Again, I will emphasize that the different design approaches between the two watches are very evident when we observe the case designs, and that translates throughout the rest of their individual formats. We look at how the dial of the Submariner has been set. In a similar way to the case, purposeful, very bold and easy to read, as any good dive watch should be. The characteristic Cyclops lens makes the date reading experience easier, and on the whole, because it is so spare of detail and excess, there is very little to fault. Like with all things, the simplest approach stands the test of time better. The dial of the Seamaster, on the other hand, is more elaborate. The newer references, bringing back the wave pattern, carries through the flow approach to how their cases are made. Instead of an offset date window, this one has been neatly placed in the center of the dial. I won't dwell on the basics anymore, but instead look at the aspects that I believe work the best with both watches. The Submariner seems to have all of its emphasis placed on the bezel and the dial. These two components are vital to the watch's character. So looking at the bezel, what I appreciate is the simple typeface and balance between the markers. The dial on the Submariner shares many similar traits to the Seamaster, but for the sake of legibility, a triangle at the 12 helps to easily center the eye when reading the time. Another defining component that adds a utilitarian draw to the watch's aesthetic is the crown guard assembly. Moving to the Seamaster, the components that stand out the most are the sword-styled hands, the red accent used on the seconds hand, and the date complication in the center. There is a symmetry to the watch that makes it all the more practical and appealing. The case design, with turned-in lugs, adds some visual complexity, but also tapers in the overall width of the watch, and paired with the modern bracelet design, it has the impression of being a more versatile watch for dress and sports occasions. Of course, the two watches have their cons, and I have deliberately left them out, instead taking the aspects of each that attract me to the individual pieces. Hypothetically then, let's say that a designer was given carte blanche to bring these two iconic pieces together and create a love child between them. How could it best be executed? Using the above elements that were highlighted would help make a substantial watch, but at the same time, the design needs to be kept simple. So that thought stayed in the back of my mind. How did the process start? It was coming up with a name that took a bit of thought. Submaster, Sea Mariner, that didn't really cut it. Then Master Submariner just hit the mark. And then it was distilling how to find some kind of unity between the two watches. And in the case of the Industrial Submariner and the Organic Seamaster, there is an excellent pairing that we can find. After some editing, playing around with a few basic layouts, here is my answer. The Seamaster case was the preferred base plate, and then the bezel and dial of a Submariner was placed on top of it. I removed the Seamaster crown and crown guards and replaced them with a scaled down Rolex set, adding more hardness to the surface. The helium release valve, a contentious component of the Seamaster, has been placed in a more accessible position under the crown guard, allowing it to be adjusted easily without the wearer needing to manipulate the wrist. This was added to keep one of the defining characteristics of the Seamaster Professional present. The base color chosen for the Master Submariner is blue, since blue better represents the environment that the watch will be living in. It uses a Rolex dial and bezel layout simply because it feels easier to read at a glance, but adopts a date window at the 6 o'clock position. The hardest part was determining whether to use a triangle or a twin baton layout at the 12. Each configuration gives the watch a different feel, but for the sake of balancing the Rolex and Omega characteristics, using twin batons would overpower the watch slightly. And in any case, as mentioned earlier, the triangle at the 12 helps center the eye easily. I then eliminated both the Mercedes handset and the skeletonized sword hands, and instead adopted a more direct and legible set of sword hands, found on many mil-spec pieces where both of these watches shared a common history. Other small touches, the bezel insert has been fully graduated, in keeping with the Seamaster's aesthetic. The triangle at the 12 is highlighted in red, pairing with a tip on the seconds hand. I created a logo using both the Rolex coronet and Omega symbol, and reduced the printing of the dial down to Master Submariner. With a few examples, I also experimented with a wave dial pattern, but it ended up looking too complicated. Really, the whole process was about trying to find parity between both pieces and where the components complemented each other. The goal was to create a watch that shared a nearly equal amount of DNA from each. The Omega case and bracelet gives the watch a different feeling, 
of something more elegant and organic, and the Submariner dial and bezel gives you a very direct and simple reading experience. On the whole, it is a simple watch, and I think that simplicity is what allows a dive watch to feel so utilitarian. My personal favorite color combination is the slate gray finish. The matte feeling paired with the red highlight gives the watch such a punch, and it calls back to the ghosting that aluminium bezels experience after years of bleaching in the sun, quite the characteristic trait of dive watches. In the end, I wanted to capture and present both halves of Rolex and Omega's iconic dive watches, showing off some of their best attributes. I'd be very interested in knowing your thoughts. It's a cool concept, thinking about two brands collaborating with certain models, and this could very well be the start of a completely new series in the future. Give me some suggestions of watches to pair together, and until then, I hope you enjoyed the unveiling of the Master Submariner.